Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I'd like to do another disassembly and maintenance video. But uh, as always with the Spydeco, I gotta include the little warning here. If you take apart your Spydeco Rubicon, there's a chance they're not gonna allow you to, you know, get any service or anything on it. I'm taking a risk here, so you don't have to. Also, I do want to thank my buddy Peter for sending this guy along and very specifically stating that I can disassemble it and tweak any of the knives he sent. That's a nice thing for him, and it represents some trust. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to do my best by him here and make sure that he gets a knife back that has an absolutely stellar action. So this guy right now, in terms of action, isn't doing bad at all. But there is a little bit of grittiness, and that just tends to be the case with uh, Flipper's, well, any kind of knife running on bearings. Uh, I think I need a little bit bigger than that. That is step number one to avoid stripping out screws. If you don't have the right bit, don't bother. Go get it. And that's why I like my little uh, bit set that I've got a review on. Honestly, just so damn much. There's just a lot of good there. So right now I'm popping out the pivot here. There we go. And uh, pardon the air conditioner. It is hot as heck in here. Hopefully it's not too loud for you guys. Let's see here. Go ahead and stash this guy back here. I believe we're looking at a T6 for these back here. Yeah, there we go, T6. And uh, another T6. Now what I'm actually hoping for is, you can see here that we're not gonna be able to take out these two screws without removing the clip. And that just involves a whole lot more, well, a whole lot more screwing. And I'd just as soon not do that if I can avoid it. So what I'm gonna try and do is just take it apart from the one side here and see whether I actually need, in practice, to remove both liners here. So, let's see about this here. I'm being a little ginger with this guy because, oh, perfect. That's beautiful. Oh, neat, all right. So um, immediately, one thing I can see here is that there is a fair amount of uh, wear on the back side of this little washer. So if we take a look up close here, what we've got is a, um, a steel bearing race, basically, that the bearings rotate against here. Oh, there, there that went as well as a set of captive bearings. So I need to make sure that that race goes in properly. But the fact that the race has got some wear on the back of it here, wow things really light is implying to me that this needs maybe a little bit more lubrication because the bearing race itself is spinning as well so there you go gonna pop that off very carefully gonna lift the blade off as that yeah this could definitely use a little bit of cleaning and because the um the liner here is a titanium which is nice um oh excellent i can just lift this off too yeah, I got no need to disassemble this guy further. It's not like the titanium is rusting away underneath the carbon fiber here. And if I can avoid taking out these extra screws and running the chance of stripping them or even just putting any wear on them for my buddy Peter here, I'm gonna go ahead and avoid that. So what I'm gonna do instead is just take it to this level because I'm able to clean every single moving part that I have to worry about. So that's nice. Uh, this is a really nicely put together knife. Honestly, this is a knife right here that I'm I, I'm a little surprised by. When I first, you know, he made the offer to send the Rubicon along, I've looked at the Rubicon over and over and over again in my life. Right now I'm just using some diluted Simple Green here, just to wipe off the uh, titanium. There we go. But the Rubicon is a knife I've looked at a lot, because I like Spydeco, I like flippers, and I like high-end construction, and this promised to be all three. Um, and But, you know, each time, the funky looks, or the, the thickness, or whatnot, always kind of just left me cold enough that I decided, you know what, I don't think I'm going to go there. And, uh, you know, I'm really glad that Peter sent this along, because it turns out there's actually a fair amount of compelling in this knife here. Um, you know, is it the perfect knife? No, not necessarily, but it doesn't need to be either. There's a whole lot of good here, and that's really what matters. So right now, all I'm doing, and I'm trying really hard to keep everything on camera, but it's hard because, you know, with small little parts, I want them up close to my eyes, and if I get them up here, my eyes are off camera. So 
There's that. That's clean. All I'm doing is running the washers against the uh, simple green bit of cloth here. And all of this is happening while well, I got some code compiling over there on the computer. Multitasking. That's for damn sure. Alrighty. Here we go. And I'm going to need to clean that a little better, I think. This is often the case. The bearing race, you may or may not be able to see that, but it's subtly deformed. There's a little bit of a V-shape to it because the bearings are exerting pressure on it. So that's something we got to clean a little bit more carefully. So I'm pinching it there. And here we go. Again, there's some evidence that the bearing race has been turning rather than the bearings themselves. Not the end of the world, but it's not going to make for the best action in the world either. Uh, it's interesting, actually, come to think of it, that they're using a bearing race at all here, because most of the time on a uh, titanium-based uh, flip a knife, I'm just hitting a uh, Q-tip with a little bit of simple green here. I'm going to use that to do some of the rest of the cleanup. But most of the time on a titanium knife, you tend to just run the bearings against the titanium, and it's there's no smoothness penalty for doing that. I mean... That's uh, that's what the Greensmos are doing, ZT, most of their flippers are running the bearings right on the titanium. It's not like it's a bad thing uh, or an ugly thing at all. So the fact that they elected to use those spaces is interesting to me. It's not bad, it's just different. It adds a little bit of complexity. Oh boy, this blade's a little dirty up in here. In fact, I'm going to hit that a little harder. So I'm going to use my little Q-tip in here to get to the uh, inside of the pivot because that's kind of an important area. Man, this knife is kind of a joy. But yeah, actually carrying this guy, yeah, it's a little thick in the pocket. This is kind of a pseudo-review. It's a little thick in the pocket. Yeah, it's a little weird looking. But my God, there's, there's a lot of good here. And so I am really genuinely grateful to my buddy Peter for sending this along, and he also sent along some other gems. Well, I'm not saying gem as an official classification, but, uh, you know, he sent along a Benchmade Rift and a Spider Code Death Horn, which is another that I've been really interested in checking out. So I really, really enjoy my viewers. They are stellar, stellar human beings. So, okay, um, at this point in time... The only thing left to do, wipe off the backspacer, because, you know, why not? The orange G10 does have a um, tendency to attract crud, and especially, I don't know if you can see this, but there's kind of a grooving effect inside the kind of horizontal grooves, and so it's very easy if you scrape it up against something for that to kind of, I don't know about impregnate, that's a little deep, but uh, to get wedged into the G10 there and be ugly for a while. I hit this one more time, and now I'm going to hit the blade. I'm being very careful, of course, to avoid the live edge. I think I've said this before, but straight razor shaving is great preparation for knife maintenance because you get a very good idea of exactly what it means to interact with an edge on a regular basis. What angles are going to hurt you, what angles are not going to hurt you. Not to go horizontal. Not saying everybody needs to go out there and start straight razor shaving. And honestly, I don't do it all the time. But I do appreciate and enjoy it when I have a chance. All right, so I've wiped down all the surfaces of the blade, and I've wiped down the area where the stop pin rests. Basically, this knife is now good to go. Well, good to go back together, at the very least. So, go ahead and wipe that down. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and hit the blade tang with a little bit of frog lube. Not because... I'll hit the whole blade. Not because it's going to particularly need it, being an S30V and whatnot. But because I want to do a solid to my buddy for sending along a beautiful thing. So I'm just applying a thin coating with my finger here. Again, when you're approaching the edge, always go off the edge and never up against it. This is a dangerous game I play right here. So, there we go. Beautiful. Making sure that I've got a nice coating on the inside there. The one area I'm consciously not hitting is the inside of the pivot, 
because honestly there's not a lot of need for it. Now I'm wiping it off. There we go. Not a lot of need for it, then it does have the potential to gum up the works a little bit. Perfect. And I do like the grind on this guy. I mean, look at that, that nice swedge. I'm not usually a swedge lover, but oh, this is a pretty compelling swedge over here. Okay, hey, interesting, that actually looks, it's either carbonization, hopefully you can see this, it's either carbonization or a lock bar insert. I think it's just carbonization, but either way, it's fancy, beautiful. Okay, let's put this guy back together now, shall we? First off, notice that the uh, pivot itself has a uh, flat edge on it, and so we want to make sure that as we insert the pivot, come on, the flat edge is properly positioned. There we go. Pivot is in. Now we're going to drop down a spacer and, uh, well, spacer, bearing race, whatever, and I'm paying very close attention to the contour of the bearing race. Remember I said it takes on a V-shaped contour after a while. I'm making sure that the uh, the concave portion is facing upwards. Now I'm going to start with the lubrications. I'm not lubricating behind the race here because it doesn't need to be lubricated there. A little bit of it will get behind there, no doubt. Okay, that was a little much. There we go. Now I am going to drop in a bearing and using my little oiler tool here, I'm gonna just rotate that bearing in place. And what that allows me to do is get a nice coating of lubrication across all the balls. Oh boy. So uh, yeah. Right now, I uh, have everything ready there. It's now time to mount the blade. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do on this guy, yeah, I'm gonna make sure that the pivot, oh there, is nicely lubricated. Beautiful. And I'm gonna go ahead and run a little bit of lube up in this area here. Mostly trying to spread what's there, but that's just lubricating the detent track. We'll make it slide a little nicer. And there we go. Beautiful. That's more than enough lubrication. I'll be wiping some of it off later, but you know what? Why not? And a little tiny bit here. I tend to run knives wet. Part of that's because I do maintain them regularly. Uh, when you run a, a knife on bearings wet, you run the risk of picking up more dirt and whatnot. Um, and that's that's a real concern, but the thing is, if you maintain your knives properly, it's not actually a real concern. So on the other side here, I'm gonna do my steps in reverse. So first I place a little lubrication on the blade. Now I'm gonna run the bearing a little bit here, get the bearings nice and well coated. Now, I'm actually going to place a little tiny drop of lubrication up on top of this bearing race and drop the race again, making sure that the concave side is facing the bearings into there. Now everything is in the proper positioning. Uh, at this point, what I need to do is drop on the back spacer. Beautiful. Is there anything else that I'm missing here? No. Okay. In that case, I'm going to very carefully and gingerly pop this guy back on. So I'm using the back two holes to align. And again, taking it slow, taking it easy. Backsides popped out a little bit here. There we go. Pop through. Now this is good to go. Hey, excellent. Excellent, excellent. That went pretty well so far. Gonna go ahead and take a little bit of blue Loctite to these screws. Not because they're super necessary. It actually was running without any Loctite at all. 
previously. Just a little tiny dab. Dropping that on there. Making sure not to uh, get any on the carbon fiber. Not that it's necessarily a big problem. You can wipe it off. But, uh, you know, some materials, Loctite, can be a little hard to get off. And this carbon fiber really is beautiful. Spyderco's carbon fiber game tends to be a little weak. I mean, they do like the G10 with carbon fiber coating and whatnot. And, you know, okay, whatever. But this, this is nice. Polished carbon fiber is just, oh boy, that's luxury. Okay, whoa there. So I have now Loctited my pivot screw to the carpet. I am going to just wipe it off with my thumb real quick, make sure I'm not putting random fibers from the carpet off on there. And dropping my pivot screw in. There we go. All right, now I don't really have a good sense of how tight this needs to start off at. So I'm gonna start retightening. There we go. Okay, the answer is not that tight. So I'm gonna dial it back just a hint. Oh man, that's nice. Holy crap. Okay, so blade is centered, which means I'm good to go there. Everything else is together. The stop pin is working. Not a hint of horizontal blade play. Oh yeah, that's nice. And the knife is just, oh, it's running beautifully right now. I like this a lot. This is a great flip in action. Um, part of it's because the blade is so damn heavy. Part of it's because Spyderco did their homework here. But uh, yeah, very, very nice action there. Does it drop shot? It does drop shot. This is the smoothest Spyderco I've actually experienced, which makes sense because it's one of the more expensive ones. But uh, hey, this looks great. And so this is your Spyderco Rubicon. Put back together, we have crossed your Spyderco Rubicon and uh, everything looks good on the inside. And I gotta say, that was a pleasure to take apart and put back together. Well done there, Spyderco even if you believe that nobody should ever have such of a pleasure. I hope this has been interesting to you, that you enjoy your Spyderco Rubicon if you have one, and that you enjoyed the video, even if you don't. Have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. And oh boy, thanks again, Peter, for letting me have that pleasure. Have a good one.